Hey guys, how's it going? It is my different username here, and today we are going to be covering one of my biggest and baddest projects as of lately, and I would never lie to you guys, this project has been quite tasking for me, which is why it took so long for me to even get where we are right now. So. I would honestly very much appreciate a like on this video if you could. This absolutely took a very long time to design and build and record. And at the end of the video, I actually do have some personal things in my life that I would love to share with anyone who's really interested in listening. But for now, we do have an absolute behemoth of a machine to go through, explaining all of its wild features and really to show us what makes this rifle here so exotic and so awesome to behold. Without further ado, here we have the GM6 Lynx 50 caliber anti-material rifle, full size and all, made out of Lego. So, the GM6 Lynx, or what's also known as the Signal 50 from the new Modern Warfare 2, but it's also known as the Heppard Model 6 anti-material rifle, and this was the multi-purpose rifle designed by four different engineers, in fact, to all work for the Hungarian People's Army on a project translated to the Heppard Telescopic Sniper Rifle, which started in 1987, where the Hungarian forces sought after a weapon system that could be both compact enough for infantry use and carry, but also reliable enough to use up against the heavier enforcements that could possibly scale from vehicles on ground to even aerial vehicles. But there were certain requirements needed for this testing to be complete, and with several iterations of the weapon's development, including switching between whether or not it should be bolt action or semi-automatic, and amongst the complexity of even different calibers used throughout the rifles, decades later, we eventually reached the pinnacle of the Yepper design, which settles upon a semi-automatic bullpup model, and it truly is a fascinating design. And even with the amount of force it can deliver to, it really does come in pretty handy, and would be significantly great to use for moving throughout smaller buildings, and even traveling inside of a vehicle. Its biggest feature by far has to be its long recoiling system, which dramatically reduces the felt recoil, which makes it pretty easy to crank the sucker down and really go ham on it. And even to this day, these rifles have been further designated to other countries like India and even Mali, who in the past actually used the more archaic M2 model. And to start off, we could take a good look at this massive grip here, which is very much needed when it comes to all of this weight. This is, and has always been, a very significantly heavy weapon, even in its now plastic form. So if it wasn't for the Technic built spine that runs inside of the grip here and connects fully into the receiver of the weapon, it would make it very difficult to maneuver around, so I'm very much appreciative of it, because without it, this would just be a full on disaster. And the grip here is so big that it could even be used with the incorporation of gloves as well, which makes a lot of sense considering where this weapon originates from. And the big buttons on each side makes it very easy to take it off from fire and safety, and the colors on each side is a nice way to depict their difference too. Another noteworthy observation to find is this giant slot available underneath the grip, and it actually does have a reason to be there, and that's for another feature that we will have the better chance of covering later on. Up next, we have the magazine for the Lynx, and this style of magazine is great for the bullpup aesthetic of the rifle. And if we take it out real quick, we can look at more of its details, which aren't seemingly noticeable at first glance, but closer up, we can actually see that there is a little bit of a rough design on each side that does represent the actual look of the magazine itself in real life, as well as being represented too as a single stack magazine, as clearly depicted by the ammo identification holes on the sides of the mag. And on the top, you could see the very crayon looking like 50 caliber bullet that I had designed long ago for my 50 caliber Barrett and have essentially copied over the exact caliber look to keep everything consistent with all my designs. I even wanted to make the magazine transform so it actually does have the option to completely empty itself dry so that you could seemingly run the gun with no crayon ammo whatsoever. And another aspect to this magazine is its release system which can be seen right here and is actuated from the left hand side which simply moves a bar out of the way and there is an angle connected to the magazine. Once it slides into the backwards railing it actually holds the whole thing in place. It's a very ingenious design and even with just one click, you can easily remove the magazine, which really could make for a speedy reload, but 
I unfortunately don't have enough Lego to make another magazine. So, do I have an extra? Yes, I do. Uh, always check your chamber, because safety matters. But yeah, I gotta say, it's an ingenious design, and I think I translated it to Lego very well. And now, the most important detail of all. We have the... Whew, this thing is kind of heavy and um, kind of getting to me. Okay, sorry guys. I'm going to watch this video and catch my breath. And uh, well, it's not too bad timing either because this video is sponsored by VeloWave Electric Bikes. And after taking it out for a spin myself, I gotta say, I think I have fallen in love. This bike has just been amazing to me the entire time I've had it. Not only has the installation been easy and a great way to build another project that wasn't Lego, it's fun to take out and ride around the neighborhood. It's fun to ride around other neighborhoods, and even getting food is no problem too. You could just grab some burritos or some sub sandwiches with your fellow furry companions to help accompany you. It also has assisted pedaling with seven gears of shift to make it easier on your legs during outdoor trailing, going up steep hills. Or you could even use the throttle for no pedal riding whenever you feel a little tired and just want to chill while still moving for that extra minute of rest. It's fast, quiet, effective, has efficient battery life, a great way to exercise, and all around fun for everyone too. Even my family loves getting the chance to ride it. Hey Ma, check it out. No pedaling. That's great. Isn't that awesome? If you go down below to the link in the description and use my code MDUNE, all in lowercase, it'll help you get a discount on your next purchase through VeloWave. With gas and everything else going through the roof in price, it helps to know that you could travel about without worrying about wasting money as you ride. And when you're all done, you could bring it back home and simply plug it into the wall and have it charged up for the next day. This bike only builds up more value as time goes on, and after months of personally testing it out myself, I could truly recommend this to anyone I know. I'm a pretty heavy guy too and this can hold me up pretty well while still being really fast so gotta say this thing is tough don't waste any more time and get yourself or a loved one an e-bike today using my code on screen here thank you once again to VeloWave for sponsoring this video and let's get right back into it all right not too bad now what was i saying oh yeah the most important detail to cover by far is the bolt, which really is one of the most extravagant parts of this weapon. And just this little bit of techery is what surprisingly helps cycle the weapon. And a lot of testings and redesigns actually went into this to get it to become this whole functioning system that you see right here. And from the side, I used a basic hinge brick to allow the ability to swivel the charging handle out while also allowing enough friction for it to close all the way when fully cycling the rifle. No rubber bands or anything necessary. It's not a really bad system for what it is, and it's one I've been using for a very long time too. It can have the tendency of closing too soon in on itself, but truthfully, this is pretty uncommon and I don't even really recall having any issues with this much on my own accord. Another part of this is the chambering system that will also force the bolt to go through the process of needing to fully twist into place and lock down, kind of like how an actual chamber would work on a real weapon. It's cool to get to create such a realistic design like this, really for any build. The issue normally would just be its scaling, but because of the fact that the GM6 is, well, the size it is, it definitely helped allow this feature to really bloom and it's great. On each side of the bolt, we have the main house spring for the bolt, but I actually utilize this area more as a track for the bolt to run as smooth and straight as possible. And on the other side, we have what most people don't even know about is actually where the hammer is housed. And it's housed in this interesting canted fashion that aligns perfectly to the firing pin area on the back of the bolt. It was such a cool aspect for me to learn about when I was first researching this that I had to recreate it. Even though I'm not one to really normally make hammers for weapons built like this, typically that's exclusive for outside hammer designs, but I do believe that it was well worth adding here. One more thing to this is considering just how open this whole area is in general. That the issue of getting things legitimately stuck into this track here before something like combat would be catastrophic for sure. So to counter all that, of course it would actually come really handy to have a giant dust cover to go and cover the giant exposed area on your weapon. And well, it does such a good job of protecting the bolt that it can even hold the charging handle forward too to keep everything safe and clear for both travel and storage. 
And I'm sure you guys have already noticed another super cool feature of this gun, but just in case, the bolt does in fact connect to the barrel, and it's pretty interesting how I did it. After some time designing and not getting too far forward with the bolt, I had to think more outside the box, and typically bolt designs lock into chambers from an internally built system that rotates into place, but here, this side panel can actually come out and we'll show you how the claw piece down here locks into the chamber part of the barrel, and you can see how it catches and holds the entire piece and from the simple lifting of the charging handle it releases the barrel completely back forward which I'll admit was significantly challenging trying to balance everything together but the barrel has to move in this way to actually mitigate the ginormous recoil that this gun still actually pretty much delivers and it's because of this barrel design that the shooter barely feels any recoil while shooting you could even tell just by seeing how the system was built too how it would be so necessary to have certain things designed like this deflection plate here to help release the barrel from the bolt and other things too like a thick butt pad to help suppress this massive recoil so we might as well take another look at the back of the links and here it also shows up top what would normally be used as a disassembly area for the real version of this gun but this unfortunately wasn't incorporated into my lego design so with the barrel being under so much tension it could be a real pain to deal with and well, it would make sense to make some type of device that could actually help hold it in place. And this right here does just that. This locking piece has a sharp angled catch in the front that traps and holds all the tension down from the ring of the muzzle brake in the front with little to no issue at all and in an instant can actually be released with the press of a button. I'm very happy with how this turned out, and it's super effective too, because if you haven't noticed also, this does have the second function of chambering around too when having a magazine inserted. Gotta say, not bad for on the move travel. We should also look into the muzzle brake, which had to be redesigned a few times to compensate for all the force that was coming from the barrel. I mean, it was pretty rough the first few times filming, but we are now in an amazing spot where not only does it still look the part, but it actually holds up entirely. Which, I, I guess it's supposed to be like that already, but you know, it's fun to celebrate these small victories. Speaking of which, maybe I should mention the amount of time that went into making this bipod attachment, and it may surprise you to know that it actually took me about a third of the whole process time just to work on this part alone. So let's see what the big deal is. Taking this off, we can have a better look at the legs here, and they hold this position thanks to the rubber bands connected to the bottom of the pads, and when they're pulled back, they will release the separate leg from the locked position, and swiveling this down will again lock into another roughly 90 degree spot. It's not a bad system, but getting it to become this rigid with just Lego was very challenging, and after multiple revisions, I do think it looks really good where it's at right now. The ring piece up front that holds all these parts to the rifle can be swapped around to kind of simulate the same accessibility that the real rifle has to offer, but mine's a little different, where you would just place down these four different parts to whatever scattered area has exposed jumper plates, and from there, when the bipod is swapped down below the barrel, it can now hold itself up as far as rough surfaces go, like the outside elements or even carpet. As well, the same legs that pull to release the locking mech can also be adjusted for different lengths, and when this little tab is removed from the foot pads, it can be plugged into any of these various holes at various heights, and now the bipod can be a lot bigger than what you saw before. But wait, there's more! Remember that slot from earlier? Well, it turns out that that wasn't a fib. And the reason it's there was to incorporate this little monopod piece that goes into the spine for the grip and now we have an even taller setup from before for any specific reason you would need. Granted, I do have to hold this here as it was kind of windy, but it still held up all the weight on its own, even in its most extended length, which I personally find to be very impressive. It may not be the most perfect bipod design I've built, but I do love how useful it's been for me so far, so that's gotta mean something, right? Now, onto the massive part of this, the scope. And truly, this could have been any kind of scope, but I figured why not pick the one used by the Signal 50 in MW2? So I just went ahead and picked this because it just happened to be a super beefy scope and it's supposedly variable too, running from an 8 to a 12.5x magnification. Wish I could say that about the turntable reticle here, but that's definitely only 1x. At least it fits the aesthetic of the weapon quite well. And also, I was intrigued by the weird cover thing that came along with this scope too. 
I wasn't quite sure what it was because I haven't really seen anything like it before, but I was thinking it has to be something either super complex or really just something. And apparently, after some more research, it turns out it totally is just that. It's a factory protector for expensive scopes so that they don't get damaged if dropped or while transported. It connects from the Picatinny rail around the scope, so I guess it's totally okay to have lean up against the wall and just chill there too, but it turns out there is another feature to it. And at the top on the real version, it's said to have a hidden gutter sight, but I wasn't aware of this with my first draft design. However, I did happen to layer down these tile pieces here, which technically aren't guttered whatsoever, but sure do aim like they can be. And to help myself save some time on this build and overhaul the video, I figured why not just roll with this? It's technically even more subtle, and we get to show off more studs in what is a fairly studless build. There is some good utilization to be had from the rail spacing available all over the weapon system. And we could show off another attachment, like this foregrip. This here was built from the same design that was made for my CZ Scorpion build, but slightly beefed up by a plate to handle the bigger caliber and size. It really just allows another way to stabilize the rifle while firing, and to complement this, we even have another attachment that can be placed on the right hand side rail, out of sight, but not out of mind thanks to the pressure pad too, and in low light situations, this could be very beneficial to run, even in a crazy caliber like this. And as much as I just love this scope and cover too, they are very heavy together, so this feels a little bit more comfortable to have removed. So comfortable, in fact, that this railing could be used for many other optics that could fit, like my very own holographic sight. Based from the EXPS3 model of the EOTech, this classic makes an ideal sight for CQB type scenarios or just easier clearance in general for aiming compared to something as magnified like a scope. But what if we could go even further beyond and attach an even smaller sight? Some of you might even be looking at this too like, I don't understand, where's that little riser that was really needed before? And well, let's just say I was able to ditch that brick light and finally slim down this red dot design thanks to this little circuit board and battery piece below. And this was manufactured and sold by BrickStuff.com, where they have plenty of other LEDs to use for even your own LEGO projects. And this is not a sponsor at all. Their product just simply worked out for the one problem I had, and that was when I was just using that brick light. It's just way too bulky for such a slim design like this, and it's a lot more preferable to have on something as bulky as a holographic site. And we could bring out that scope once more, with no cover this time, and without it, we could actually appreciate some of the more hidden details that we couldn't see before, and even run one of my favorite hybrid optic choices to use. And now that we've shown off the new Viper Red Dot, it's time to use it again in its finest of manners, one of which I'd figured would be this 45 degree angled mount that actually could house the Red Dot for quick aiming in close quarters, as well as having the capability of long range. And altogether, this you see on screen here is my favorite loadout for the GM6, and it's a blast to even get to recreate it completely into its LEGO form, details and all. So, in conclusion, there were tons of attachments and afterthoughts made in consideration of this build, like the fact that I wanted to originally make a LEGO suppressor for this too, but it ended up becoming more of an issue to design and gather parts for. This video already took so long to make that I didn't want to add more setup just to build a suppressor for this, as cool as that would have been. So that's kind of a shame, but everything built here is so extremely detailed that I hope this isn't much of an issue for anyone who would want to download these instructions. Also, I wanted to point this out, but considering that this is a fairly well-balanced gun, thanks to the bullpup design, and having one round chambered with a full mag of five rounds to complement it, this would theoretically make it the biggest one-handed six-shooter I think in existence, or at least that I have built. And I don't know, the thought of someone having this as a technical one-handed six-shooter and blasting away is just funny. Either way, this build was crazy, definitely one of my most proud builds by far, and what a way to start off the year too, but I can only hope and see if you all think the same thing too. Hey guys, how's it going? It is my different username here, and well, we're back at another update, and it actually feels really good to get in front of you guys once again, and kind of share what's been going on, and let me tell you, there's a... Uh, there's a lot going on, you know, uh, spoiler, you know, uh, th this is going to be kind of a heavy one. This is a video I'm sincerely not looking forward to filming. I have been, I have been dreading this 
And for starters, I actually think we need to talk about the current cancel culture that's unfortunately kind of happening to me right now. I, it needs to be addressed. You know, for a while now, I was just kind of thinking to myself, oh, maybe if I do some behind the scenes work, you know, maybe if I try to just like fill in some extra work here and there, I can kind of give off this idea that everything's, you know, cool and all, but nah, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be honest. I, I have people coming down on me exactly for what you are thinking. And it's really, I'm just going to say it, it is not fair at all. And I'm going to call it out. I'm going to use this platform to call it out, especially on Etsy Zen, because if you were to really truly ask me on a more level if what they are doing is correct, I would say no. They are absolutely biased, they are being bullies, and they are absolutely bullying me for my art. And I do not think that is fair, and I think it is totally unreasonable what they are trying to do to me. You guys are probably wondering, oh my gosh, what is what is he talking about? This is kind of, you know, this is kind of a lot, but uh, no, you know, as you can see from this unfortunate email right here i do sincerely think it's actually unfair that etsy will go after me for my art and will literally support other terroristic organizations i can't say what they are and i can't list them on here because i'll get in trouble with youtube but truthfully they are listing other organizations with no bias against them at all full support that they could post whatever they want including their art and yet my art has been limited, has been subjugated. And I'm like, that is not fair. No, sincerely. So Etsy, you're a bunch of bullies. I'm calling you out because that is totally unreasonable. You just don't like guns. And to the people watching, uh, I really, really just don't want to offend people. But I can't help it if everyone just gets offended by everything nowadays. So sorry to say it, but um, guns exist. Guns will always exist, guns are important, and guns are always going to be around no matter how much you hate them. Sorry, not sorry, but that's just the truth. And that's going to be the truth even when I'm not even here or around to even defend or say that. That's still going to be the truth. And I just find it ridiculous that people's emotions are now conflating and getting in the way of this stuff, including my art, including my career. I guess what I'm kind of upset about is... You know, if it wasn't for the fact that Etsy was supporting other organizations that completely and absolutely support hate, you guys are absolutely giving a platform to hate groups, by the way. And because of your bias, you don't even like realize what you're doing. It's just completely unfair to people like me who are not even supporting hate groups at all because I'm the one telling people the positivities of guns and the history behind them. That's it. And that's how it should be. Because I'm not trying to sit here and teach people hate. That's a horrible thing to teach. In fact, I'm actually doing a lot more by supplying people the education about weaponry. And instead of, you know, just shielding everything behind censorship, there, there's no reason to be like, oh, well, th this information is so bad that you shouldn't hear it. No, that is a ridiculous take. There should absolutely be a platform for everyone on a neutral level. That's how it should be. But Etsy clearly takes their bias and I'm just going to call them out on it because they are absolutely supporting hate groups while attacking people like me who don't support that type of stuff, but yet call my art evil. Ah! Uh, 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 uh! Oh, oh my god, is that a Lego gun? There's just a lot of, a lot of terrible things with Etsy that I'm like sitting here like Etsy was such a nice thing for me to do when it came to the adpocalypse of YouTube and just to see where we are now is just really sad to see so until Etsy makes their own changes I'm totally gonna be you know taking all the instructions off and putting them onto my website the only issue is it's just gonna take a lot of time and if you guys have been wondering why does Kyle not upload I mean this video is just gonna be full of explanations to why videos have been taking so long but that's uh that is the regards to Etsy right there but um we're actually not done there there's another platform that's been kind of coming after me not as hard but definitely needs to be mentioned and right now that's YouTube pretty hard stuff but yes we need to address YouTube now now I I, I will say YouTube does have its you know you know its things 
but they haven't been necessarily coming after me so far. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna regret these words. I just, you know, I'm, I'm so sick of it that I, I can't just feel like I can just be an artist and do my thing, that I must watch my words, I must, you know, watch everything that I'm doing, that I must be so careful myself because of other people. It's just, it's just, I, I find it so ridiculous. I'm already finding so many battles enough as it is. But the thing with YouTube is, at least with me personally, is sometimes they will, you know, kind of be like that with me. And um, they'll go after a lot of my older videos. And a lot of the times they'll, like, you know, either age restrict them or maybe they'll just, like, uh, you know, say, oh, copyright. Because I did have the issue of, you know, not... Well, I wouldn't say the issue. It, it just sucks when someone five years ago says, Oh, this is copyright free. Sure thing, use it. And then he changes his mind five years later. Yeah, that, that kind of sucks. Because a lot of my videos are, have been getting copyrighted because of that reason. And I'm just like, well, that's... Where's the where's the fairness in that? You know, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to not bore you guys. You know, I feel like when I talk and talk, I'm boring. I'm so boring. So of course I'm gonna add some music. I'm boring. But again, I am kind of putting that on me because that is still a copyright issue technically. But now I've actually gone the right way and I use a music licensing program that. As long as the program is, exists, uh, no one should be doing anything about anything. But no, this is kind of where the biggest take comes in. So I was mentioning those copyright notices. You know, at first it was a few videos here and there, and I was getting pretty annoyed, and I kind of, I kind of didn't look into it at the time. But then I did look into it, and oh my, the videos that they copyrighted were. I think some of the biggest ones I ever made and I guess to the degree I'm trying to get at is YouTube essentially copyright copyright striked a bunch of my videos and killed two-thirds of my income because they did I, I did the math on it and they literally killed two-thirds of my income doing that so I'm sitting here with all that hard work all those years of all all that hard work taken away because of pettiness, because of anti-gunnery, because of just, you know, copyright nonsense, because of just stupid, stupid things that literally ruin, ruin the art. I am a little upset with myself because maybe I could have made better decisions to avoid these problems, but to be fair, I, I, I don't think I should be dealing, I mean, this, I find this to be so ridiculous. You know, I, I feel like in the state of where the channel has been, we should be in this area of growth and everything. And I, I just, I just feel like these platforms are just doing their hardest. Like they are going out of their way to make sure that content creators like me suffer, suffer. And I, I'm just, I'm just going to call it out for what it is because these were not issues. These were not problems. No one was thinking about this like five years ago, ten years ago. No one thought about these issues and how they would relate to, to you know, content creators like me because they they weren't they shouldn't have been related. But for some reason, we started getting more subjective and we started being more vindictive to our content creators. And and now we're in this weird position where we feel like we're walking on eggshells just. Just to, you know, just to stay out of the radar. I, I might get in trouble for this. I might I might get in trouble for this video. So may, maybe save it. May, maybe save this video. But um, it's because of all this stuff going on with YouTube and with Etsy that I'm just, I'm kind of making the decision that I, I think I need to start pushing more of my content onto my own website, mydifferentusername.com. From there, you could still see, you know, the classic videos from before. I, I've even been thinking about, you know, adding um, some of my older stuff that's been removed from YouTube and actually putting it on a website where it's not going to get copyrighted. That was an idea of mine. I was thinking of, like, doing that and another reason to check out MyDifferentUsername.com. Also, if you guys do want to, you know, support the channel and get some 
cool merch like this. Or if maybe if you're not like a fan of the jacket, you know, you're not digging the hoodie. I actually really dig the hoodie. I think it's really cool, the colored hoodie. If you're not digging the colored M Dunn logo, you always got you know a long sleeve out uh choice you know might as well while it's still nice and cold the idea i actually want to do with my website and i'm just going to share it here because might as well uh is that i actually really want to get into making a bunch of cool graphics you know graphics that can involve stuff like lego and guns you know cool stuff like that something that can involve you know all the art that that lego builders like us like the focus on and everything and you know try to just like get some cool looking merch i i actually really do care about the merch looking cool like i, I <laughs> so only cool graphics allowed that's that's kind of like my rule with it but uh that just takes time and energy and money and unfortunately i haven't had a lot of that lately and i know i'm hyping the website a lot but i actually was kind of considering other platforms too like uh, rumble and utreon and i do have accounts already set up on those uh but i'm not really you know sure about like when it comes to i guess like the algorithms of those websites i'm not really kind of like sure how they work out and stuff um, another thing that I was also thinking about too was I was, you know, still thinking I could still set up that Patreon. Now, the only issue with a Patreon is I could set up all the tiers and everything. And I, I do think of like a, I don't know, maybe like a, a $1, $5, $10 tier, you know. But I just was thinking, what, what are good things to be giving the people? That could justify the tears and i every time i ask myself this i'm actually not sure i kind of draw a blank because i'm like what can i give to you guys that you could enjoy that would make you want to support something like a patreon but i want to be as honest as i possibly can still i i still want to give people a proper service so if people can maybe if, if people could maybe possibly list down like uh, what would make for a great tier list of like a patreon down below in the comments i would love to listen and actually you know even if you guys have like any uh just ideas in general it, uh, how's your day just comment down below i really don't mind you know i i i find it really uh therapeutic to kind of read the comments sometimes not all the time the comments can be kind of crazy but like i do really like reading the comments so if you guys have a lot to say about all the stuff I've been talking about, I would definitely love to hear about it down below. Gosh, and just regarding all of that, I feel like we've gone through a lot, but uh, I kind of did want to get a little personal and and kind of share an, uh, a life update with you guys, considering that it's 2023 and I haven't stepped in front of the camera in quite a bit. My last upload was six months ago. You guys are probably wondering why that is, and you know, I now that I've been... A lot more honest with you guys you guys kind of understand and realize why everything kind of takes a while but um it's time to kind of talk about the things that have been kind of getting to me a little bit and you know it's no stranger to say that the anti-gun stuff has been getting to me quite a bit i mean sincerely i've had some of my own family uh, old friends and even old relationships come down on me just for the for the things that I do and you know I truly don't think I'm an awful person for the things I believe in well man some of my older friends and family really think I am for it and have very much shown their true colors to me and I can't even sit here and just say that that doesn't that I don't think about that every day because I because I absolutely do I absolutely think about I think about a lot of people all the time and I'll be on I'm not sure if it's healthy but I think about people like a lot I'm always worried about how people are doing and making sure that everything is okay and you know, the truth is, I just know that everything right now is not okay. So, you know, to see people kind of lash out and, and get at me for the things that I believe in the moment when I'm just kind of looking out for them, that is so 
I don't know. That re- that really depresses me, and I can't even just sit here and just say like I am a little depressed. I just, but not in the clinical sense. I've just, you know, like the the passion that I had to create like these types of videos the types of art that I was making and the the kinds of conversations and interactions I was having with not only just like my friends and family, but even fans, even just like certain things, like even when people ask, oh, what do I do? Nowadays, I just don't even bother telling people what I do anymore. It, It doesn't mean a lot to say I'm a YouTuber because the moment you do, people will ask and... I've had a lot of times where I was like, I shouldn't say something because I might upset people. And then I had times where I was really feeling confident and I just went for it. And yeah, wow, talk about, you know, you only have a 50-50 chance of, you know, either they're going to like you or hate you. I'm really good at picking the hate you part because um, it's like whenever I don't talk about my career enough, they think I'm holding back from them. And then they get angry about it. And then there was one time where I was like, you know what? I do like, yeah, I make Lego guns and I love it. It's my passion. And and this girl really hated me for saying that. I just, it's been awful. What can I say? Like, I I just feel like the things that I used to enjoy and have no problem sharing and I'd have no problem sharing because people used to kind of think it was cool. I even... I even had an interaction with a police officer who could have, like, you know, that could have been bad. But, no, he saw the Lego gun. He's like, that's made out of Lego? I was like, yeah. And he thought that was cool. This was, like, 2017, I think, when that happened. Or 2018. Just, times have really changed. I don't, or, or the people have changed. Just, something's changed. Because if you were to ask me... I, I'm, I am the same, my different username that you see, like, in the 50,000 sub special. Boom. Look at that. Huge difference right there. I'm old. Ugh. But, like, I'm, you know, like, if you were to ask that Kyle back then, hey, what do you think about Lego guns? Oh, they're cool, and I like making videos on them. I'm going to try to make them all. And you ask me today... Oh, I think Lego guns are cool. I'm going to try to make them all. I'm going to make as many videos as I can. It's like I'm... I haven't changed. I haven't changed. And yet everyone everyone around me has completely and utterly changed. Not for the better. Not for the better. I just... I can't even sit here and say that I have been feeling better. because, Because of how people have been just so just so cruel to others, so willing willing to be cruel to others, I, I, it's kind of turned me into a lot more of an introvert. I don't know if I was really much of an extrovert before, but, I mean, I just, like, I don't even really bother most of the time anymore. I'm just, like, you know, just get work done, go to bed, sleep, eat, repeat, move on. Just, I, I'm kind of, like don't like interacting with people anymore because of it. And it's really, it's really sad to say that. Like, I I don't think that should be an appropriate response, but it's just so weird because like, I feel like I've been feeling like alienated from my friends because of the gun thing. YouTube is slowly alienating me away because of the gun thing. And I'm, I'm sitting here suffering because of the beliefs that I have. And I'm just saying, I'm, how is that fair? When I haven't done anything, and nothing I was doing was ever wrong before, but now, now it is wrong. I just don't get it. And it's really caused me to kind of close up a lot. And I don't really, this is maybe the first time I've really talked to someone, I'm talking to a camera. You know, just... I have no reason to really share my inner thoughts to anyone anymore because what's the point when someone's just going to automatically think you're just an evil person because you like a gun? 
And that was hard too when I went back to Michigan and unfortunately it's not for a good reason. As of recently, my, my own grandmother has passed away and we had to go to a funeral and everything. I did meet up with my family and I think that part is great and all. And I, I'll even admit this too. I know I'm mentioning the disconnect between people it doesn't end, but I, I will say this. Me and my family have gotten a lot closer, even even with all of our differences. We have gotten so much closer as of recently, and I, I that's been a really great thing. I just, I do think that's a good thing to share. But not everyone there was too welcoming of it. Someone was asking me, like, what I do, and I just told them, and they were absolutely not thrilled to hear about that. So it's like, you know, I'm like trying to get out of my own head. I'm dealing with my own grandma's funeral. And even like right then and there when we're like, we're waiting to get into the building and, you know, my grandma's friends all showed up and everything and they're wondering who I am and they're asking all these questions and I can't help but just be honest. What what reason do I have to lie to people to, to make them feel, to make me feel, it's just... I'd rather just tell the truth because that's uh, that's easier for me to do and just some people can't handle that and I don't know just it, it, it has given me a lot of eye-opening experiences lately to see kind of what's been going on with this shift of culture and you know just just dealing with life in general I think it's easier to share these moments with you guys than to just keep holding them off and then you're sitting here questioning why videos take so long. I think it's moments like this, sharing this, I think will help reveal to people why I'm not just so instant about everything all the time and that I, I, we, you know, as I believe everyone does, we all have things to deal with in life and I'm certainly not perfect, I'm just one dude so I feel like everything I do just takes so long, blah blah blah. I am so glad to anyone who actually stuck around to even this moment right here too. Sincerely. Um, I don't want to carry this on for too long, but for anyone listening, if you're willing to support, would love to see and hear it down below in the comments. I hope you all have a great day, and I hope everything in life is good. I feel like I'm coming off on, in this really bad state, but the truth is I, I'm still doing me. Even with the worst of it, I am still doing me. I just think it's good to share these things. And, you know, now that I've been kind of dealing with all this nonsense and I know that how, I just know how bad things can get, I want, I want it to be good for everyone else. Why, why should it be bad for anyone else? Well, anyway, I don't want to carry on a weird message. So, well, I hope you guys have enjoyed take care i'm gonna be you know making my next lego gun here shortly i got a lot of ideas for you guys but the next lego gun idea is gonna be awesome i think you guys are gonna enjoy it so gonna leave it on a positive note here hope you guys have enjoyed and as always thanks for watching